great. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Laid Back History. I am currently outside the Lemoyne House in Madeline's Garden. It is just an absolutely beautiful day today. So I thought, you know, great day, great way to start this episode outside on a sunny day because if you've watched the uh, previous three uh, episodes of this uh, Memorial Day road trip. So I actually meant the first two parts. This is, this is the third part now. So anyway, back to your regularly scheduled program. You know that it was raining and miserable, so there was no time to really be outside. And if we were, we were just getting hit with rain. I think in this, um, in this episode where we visit the, uh, the burial site of Captain Samuel Brady, I think we had a bit of a respite of, in the rain. So, uh, but at any rate, uh, we're gonna be visiting, uh, as I said, Captain Samuel Brady's uh, grave site and hearing his story. Uh, Brian has a, a, is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to Captain Brady, and what an incredible story! You know, last week we had this amazing story of, of Lou Wetzel, and this week we get get uh, Captain Brady. And there's a lot of parallels that you'll see in um, in their lives. We talked about with Lewis Wetzel and, and his um, his father and brother being uh, being killed by Native Americans. You're going to see something similar with Captain Brady. So. Uh, another fascinating story, but uh, but I guess uh, I, there's no reason for me to say much more. Let's just go ahead and get into the episode. I'm in the back now. Yeah, you got to <laughs> peek over. You got to peek over head. too. Yeah. Hi. See there he is. <laughs> so, um, so where are we heading now? Going to West Liberty. We're going across the state line to West. Sam to Samuel Brady's grave site. Samuel Brady. So, Brian, can you give us just a little <clears throat> bit of background on Brady before we get there? Yeah. Um, you know, Sam Brady would have been one of those individuals probably in the last, oh, 20 years of the 18th century and definitely probably in the first 20 years of the 19th century that there would have been someone in some tavern, someone around some table, and someone around some fire that would have been talking about his exploits. Okay. Um, I would say that he probably is the quintessential hero of the Pennsylvania and Virginia frontier. Oh, okay. Um, you could say that, you know, like people today talk about sports heroes, mm -hmm. um, they would have talked about him like that. The, there would have been someone that you knew, if not yourself, that would have been saved uh, by, by, by Sam Brady. Oh. Um, he was uh, he was born May fifth. Uh, let's see, out by uh, May fifth, seventeen fifty six, I think. Um, he was out in Eastern PA. I think out around Shippensburg or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he he was the first of uh, several uh, sons. I think there might have been one or two daughters. Um, but most importantly, at the age of nineteen, he uh, and his dad. Uh, Captain John Brady and his next younger brother, James, uh, they answered the call. Uh, Washington was calling for troops and they, uh, be, they, came, they, they I think, mustered in under a uh, rifle regiment that was marching <laughs> up to Boston. And um, I think the guy's name was Captain John Loudon. I think that's who, who, who the regiment was under. But the Bradys were in every single engagement for the first two years of the Revolutionary War. Wow. Um, they were in, of course, Boston, New York, uh, then I believe it's Trenton, Princeton, um, oh, what was it, the next one, it's like Brush, Brush, no, something Creek, Br Brandywine Creek, I think. And, well, Brandywine was a creek. At the yeah, places, Brandywine Creek, I think, was it, and then then Germantown. Um, but you know, to describe to describe Sam Brady, it, there, there there was at some point they put him with red hair, and Sam Brady did not have red hair. I think they confused that with his his next younger brother, who was John, who had they said this group like flowing locks of red hair. But Sam Brady was. Uh, he had jet black hair, much like uh, Lou Wetzel, I think. Okay. Um, but they said he had like <clears throat> cold blue eyes, just very, very blue eyes. And he was 
he was about anywhere between five and eleven and six one. I've seen reports, but oh, which I, is I, large I, for that time period. Yeah, and I think five eleven is more correct because it was like five eleven and three quarters. So I'm wondering if they got that off of some uh, roll, you know, when he enlisted or something like that, because okay. they would always list your height. Um, but they said he was he was built like a plank board, which is kind of an interesting way of saying it. But he was they but he was just massively muscular. They, I mean, just like you know, nothing but sinew, muscle, and bone. And he was very very athletic, uh, that they say. And that'll come into some of his legend legendary status later on. But um, he uh, when. When, when they first got up to Boston, they uh, they were looking for volunteers to go out to this. They basically weighed out to this island for some reason. And, you know, Brady, of course, said, I'll do it. But Loudon said, no, 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 man, you're, you're way too young. We don't want you to go. And unbeknownst to Loudon, uh, the first two guys on the island, one of them was Sam Brady. Um, and he distinguished himself. His marksmanship was uh, second to none. Um, one of the uh, interesting tales in and around those different battles around Boston uh, was that he and Loudon and a couple other guys were sitting on a picket fence during a bombardment, and a cannonball actually hit the fence, knocked everyone up in the air. They said Sam Brady was one of the first guys to hit the ground, and he said that they said he was so quick that he jumped up and caught Captain Loudon in his arms. Now, whether that's true or not, but I think it just lends to how athletic he was. Mm -hmm. um, he ends up, uh, you know, he, he does get cert, uh, several commissions. He distinguished himself at the, uh, uh, it was in New York, Battle of Long Island, I think. Mm -hmm. And he, okay. becomes, he, he becomes commissioned as a lieutenant. Um, it's during these, so those first couple years, and at some point, I think it's around 17... 77 or 78, uh, he actually is under General Anthony Wayne, General Matt Anthony Wayne, um, and he's under his command. Uh, during the, uh, I think it was at German, yeah, Germantown, 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 yes. Germantown would be the last engagement that he would fight as an actual <laughs> inline soldier. And what I mean by that, like, a, like when you think of the Revolutionary War, the Continental Line. That is the last time that he's fighting as a soldier like that. Um, the rest of the war for him will be a much different type of war. Um, but it's during that engagement um, that I believe it's his father is shot in the face, knocks out all of his front teeth. He has a pretty decent size. They said a hole about the size of his thumb and his cheek. And, and also his second younger brother, I think his name was John, um, he actually comes out, and he's like 15 or 16 at the time, I think 15, he actually develops Blurzy, and they send both of them home, and James goes as well, that's in 78, uh, and Washington at that time, he doesn't really disband the Pennsylvania regiment, regiments, but he sends them back to the frontier and with the idea that they're going to protect the frontier. And I... <coughs> I'm pretty sure the Brady's are stationed at a place called Fort Muncie. Um, but one interesting thing, there was something called the Paoli, uh, the, the, the Paoli Massacre. The Paoli Massacre. Yep. And I'm trying, I think that was at, it might have been part of Germantown or was it the battle before? I can't remember. But Paoli's out east, I know. Yeah, that. it is. So yeah. it's somewhere out there in yeah. that theater. The Brady's get captured, along with a lot of other guys. You know, they get captured and they're put in a stockade. And this is really the first instance that I that I find this mythic status of Brady and his and his athletic prowess. The stockade that they were put in uh, was about 12 feet high, and with the aid of his brother, you know, kind of running and kind of doing a little pole vault with the arm kind of thing, he gets him up to the top of the stockade. He waits for the sentries to pass. He drops over the other side and opens up um, the sally port, and a lot of them escape into the swamp. But what happens, uh, Sam Brady is, he, he goes further east, he actually comes under the command of General uh, Broadhead, and he is made a captain, 
and he is in Fort Pitt and he is told to raise a company of spies or rangers. Um, and it's at this time, unfortunately, that he hears of his father's untimely death. Now, in 78, um, James, unfortunately, is killed in an ambush. Uh, he was, I, I believe he was shot, he was tomahawked, and he was scalped. And he lived for five days after that. Um, Which and, just goes to uh, show the tenacity oh, yeah. of our ancestors. But you know, the funny thing was, there was a lady that would do his hair. because I guess she loved his red hair. And she said she feared that at some point, you know, he was going to lose his top knot. And um, pull that up just a little bit right there. Um, he, she feared that he was going to lose his top knot. And, um, and this was James the brother? This was James who had the red hair. Okay. And he uh, he said, well, you know what? It would it, be a great light or decoration in any lodge. <laughs> yeah. Well, it came true. Um, he... Like I said, you know, he lingered on for five days. Actually, he made it back to it. Well, he was tomahawked and scalped. He made his way to a cabin and ended up getting it back to his mother's house, and that's where he um, unfortunately died. John, the father, was on patrol, um, and he actually came to a spot with another guy. They were on horseback, and he said, "You know, this looks like a good spot for an ambush." Two shots rang out. He took it through the back, and he died almost instantly. Uh, the Indians were in such a rush they didn't scalp him. Uh, but that was in 79, so James' his brother dies in 78, his father dies in 79, and that is while Sam is in Pittsburgh, and he gets the news, that, actually at Fort Pitt. When Sam Brady got the news that his father had died, um, I think he was quoted saying something like this, he said, Aided by him who formed the sun and the heavens, I will avenge my father's death, nor, while I live, Will I ever be at peace with the Indians of any tri of, of any tribe? Wow. And you know what? That pretty much sums up. Blood vengeance. It is, and it pretty much, I think, <clears throat> sums up the attitude of many people here on the frontier um, that were party to, and most of them were party to, some kind of uh, uh, raids from Native Americans. Well, he raises his company of rangers. Brady's Rangers, and um, they operate, they trained, I think it was in the King's Orchard, just on the Allegheny, just north of Fort Pitt, and you know, Fort Pitt was abandoned at that time, mm -hmm. because they built Fort McIntosh, because it's a little further down river, and it's like on the edge of the frontier, and so he really becomes stationed out of Fort McIntosh, um, but they operate up the Allegheny, they operate way out into Ohio, into the you know the Sandusky towns, and things like that. Um, and to give you an idea, how I mean, they uh, he would track. You know, they would take off looking for any kind of Indian sign, or when there were people that reported taken, he would you know he, he would go out, they'd find the trail, and they would track them. When he found, you know, the the uh, the cap tours. None lived. He would not let any live. Um, they would lay in wait until morning, and once a couple got up, the accuracy of all these men, when three shots rang out, three of them dropped. Then they would all draw their knives or tomahawks and rush in and do off the rest of them. Um, so, you know, he goes from operating as a Continental Line soldier to a very unconventional warfare. A guerrilla warfare. A guerrilla warfare, exactly. He, uh, and this is where his reputation and his legendary status really begins because I, I do believe that there was probably not one person, either you yourself or you would have knew somebody that was rescued by Sam Brady and his rangers out here. Uh, he, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask, um, just because, you know, with what we're doing, what is his connection to Washington County? <laughs> well, so, through the war, okay, well, there's, there's a couple connections to Washington County. Um, I would think his main connection would be when he ends up marrying um, Drusilla, Drew, Van Swearingen. Yep. 
Um, because oh, really? Yeah. Vance Warren, that was... Yes, oh, because yeah. he had he had property right in Catfish Camp. It was called, Cat, you know, okay. Washington, Washington. You know, now, there is some speculation. Now, I, I, I've kind of heard it both ways. Now, so the reason also why uh, Sam, he really liked being stationed at Fort McIntosh. The main reason was because it was pretty close to go visiting Drew. Oh, okay. <laughs> and... So you know, he, guys have never changed. No, they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was... And you know she was sent out east to gain an you know to get an education. She comes back and I mean here's Sam Brady. You know probably a pretty cut of a dashing figure. I mean he's all muscle, and um, she's 15 at the time. Oh, wow. yeah, she's a little young. Um, but his now, now, now wait a minute. You got to remember period. back then for that time period, 15 was the equivalent kind of our 21, 22. Oh well, yeah, he would only so. been. I mean, he was only like seven years uh, her elder at that yeah. time. He was in his early 20s. Yeah. Um, but uh, he, you know, they want to be married. But, you know, Vance Wergen was a good friend of his. But this is what he worried. He worried that, yes, Sam Brady was a great guy and everything. He was a good friend of his. But what he was concerned with was that he would leave Drusilla or Drew a very young widow. I mean, stands was, to reason. You know, he was in a pretty, you know, uh, very deadly occupation there. Mm -hmm. uh, one night, he decides to marry her. He rides down. Now, I've heard kind of different reports. I mean, Vance Wergen also had property because uh, I think I don't know if it was him or it was his brother that was the commander at Holiday's Cove Fort. And I don't know because there was a, there was an Andrew Vance Wergen too, but I think he might have been commander of that fort. Um, that sounds right. But so, But he also had property down there. So two reports that he either went there or he went to Catfish Camp. Um, in the middle of the night, had a horse with him, picked up Drew. They ride to, I believe it was, I think it was Les Liberty where they go to, I think. But they end up getting married. Um, now the other big thing too was that, see, Sam... He's Presbyterian, so they they went to I think it was Biggs Ordinary. Uh, the guy there made sure that the circuit rider wasn't going to leave, and they ended up getting married. Um, but the big thing was Van Schwerigen was a was an Episcopal Episcopalian. Um, so they you know went when they you know they spent their honeymoon at or on honeymoon they spent their uh, uh, wedding wedding night at uh, Biggs Ordinary, and the next day they went back to Van Schwerigen's house and, you know, what did the father do? Through a big celebration. <laughs> so, you know, he accepted the wedding. Mm -hmm. But he was still worried about Sam leaving her a very young widow. Um, some of that, you know, and just to give you an idea too, there are a lot of places <laughs> around in Pennsylvania or western Pennsylvania that are named for Sam Brady. Yeah, East Brady's, Brady. East Brady. Brady's Bend. Mm -hmm. um, I even think too, I remember reading something Correct me if I'm wrong, but I was pretty sure that on one of the ranging expeditions, one of the rangers, they were in this stream, in this creek, he slips, and I think he broke his leg, and Sam said, well, I'll tell you what, since you broke your leg in the stream, you can name it, and he names it Slippery Rock. Oh. Actually, it was Brady. Was it Brady that it did it? Brady himself Okay, maybe it was, okay. Because that ended up, I believe, I'd have to look this up again, it's been too many years. But I think what happened, what caused Brady's death later in No, that life, wasn't then. That, no, I'm not going to get to that. Wrong one? Yet. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Don't no, I think, well, because so, Slipper Rock's in PA. Yes. Yeah, no, I don't, yeah, I think he was out in Ohio when this happened, or he was coming back from Ohio. Okay. But anyways, because you're going to, you're going to give up the big, the big I'm ending. I'm sorry. Yeah. Through that Jeez. cemetery. Yeah. So, um, now, am I correct that he also had land in Charleroi, like down around Charleroi? Yeah, he. Yeah. So, so they, so they end up living first in Peters Creek, okay. on Peters Creek or Chartiers Creek. I'm sorry. Um, they, they end up living right Chartier. around Chartier. Yeah, Peter Chartier. Uh, they, they end up living along Chartiers Creek. Um, eventually, moving down into Virginia. Uh, I think down along around Wellsburg, and then ultimately over to West Liberty. Um, but the big thing that he's known for is. Brady's Leap. That's what everyone wants to talk about. Um, in 1780, uh, he is um, sent 
out, he takes uh, just a few men with him. I think it's like four scouts and four Chickasaws. And they're to go out and, um, or a 782, somewhere near. Um, they were to go out and spy on the Indian towns to get an idea of what they're doing. Um, unfortunately, they get caught. The, well, the Chickasaws leave, and then the other rangers, they all kind of get caught. Most, all the other rangers get away. Brady is captured, and he is taken to the Indian towns because they're going to just burn him at the stake and torture him. Yeah, he like does not have a good reputation amongst no, them. No, no. He would have been a great, they would have, you know, they were going to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Now, he's bound, he's basically he's stripped naked, he's bound, and they're getting ready to build the fires to put him in, and a couple different parts of this story, what happens. One is that he breaks his bonds, and he grabs a, uh, an Indian woman and throws her into the fire that they were going to put him into. And she was the chief's daughter. Of course, everyone, let, they, they let him go, and Brady makes his escape. The other one is, is that he grabs a baby That's out of her, a baby out of her arms, who is, a, who is the chief's daughter, throws the baby into the fire. And everyone screams and goes in to get the baby, and Brady makes his escape. He goes about 100 miles. Um, now, you can imagine, he's running naked. Some say that he did have some moccasins. Others say he didn't. He did a thing where his feet would get so sore they would run on his heels. Because running on your heels, you were less likely to twist your ankle. Which was something that was strange. I, you know, that was a weird thing that they said. But I can't figure out how you would do that. But, I don't either, but know. that's what they said. But so Sam, he's making his way to the Cuyahoga River, and there's a couple spots that you can ford, and the Indians know that that's where he's going, and they're closing in on him, and he breaks out of the brush. They're basically on his heels, and he leaps across this chasm. Now, they said at that time, now that you could go there today where Brady's leaps occurred, and it's like a 40-some foot leap, but that's not what it was at that time. In the early 1800s, some people went out there and he did some measurements. There was a surveyor. It was about a 22-foot leap, but you got to imagine this, too. He's jumping from a height down to a lower spot, but he made it to with, the other with side. quite possibly no shoes, blistered feet. Oh, that's it. No clothes. And no clothes. Yep. So he leaps all the way across. The Indians are astonished. He makes his way up, and they take a couple pot shots at him, and they get struck in the leg. He leaves a blood trail to Brady's Lake in Ohio, and that's where he hides, they can't find him, and they think he drowned, and then he ends up making his way back to Fort McIntosh. Um, Brady and Lou Wetzel are tied together, too. Mm -hmm. Because there was, they figured that there was a big attack coming, and Broadhead <coughs> asked him to take out a company of men to spy on the towns, and he said, I only need one. Wetzel. And he picked Lou Wetzel. Yep. Now, I'll tell this because this is a, there's a great part to this story. They they dress up as Shawnee warriors. Mm -hmm. Now that's the other thing that Brady did. Um, they didn't dress as soldiers. They didn't dress even in you know civilian clothes. They looked like Indians mm -hmm. so much so that one time when Lou Wetzel or not, when, when uh, Sam Brady came back, his own child didn't recognize him. Yeah. If I'm if, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, when we first started doing the reenacting thing with the Ohio Company, that was where the scarlet bandanas came from. Yes. Because that was what Brady would have his men wear, a common color, either a head wrap or a neck scarf, or wrap something around, around their, their arm. Around their arm to tell who to, they were. To tell who they were exactly. because they looked so yes. much like the Indians. They even, now they said that, well, Sam Brady was really tan from living outdoors. Now, you know what it was from? They said that those guys would actually, I don't know what kind of berry it was, but they would take berries, crush them, rub it into their skin to darken their stain skin. Stain it, yeah. To stain it. So they looked like Indians. Um, you couldn't tell them apart. There was there was one, well, I'll get back to the story with uh, Lou Wetzel, but there was one where he was, you know, he made his escape and he was riding on a horse, saw an Indian. He had a captive, recognized her. And the Indian looked at him and, you know, kind of waved. He rode up, Sam shot him right in the face. And the lady's like, what are you doing shooting your brother? And he goes, no, no, Jenny, it's me, Sam. She didn't even recognize him because he looked so much like an Indian. But back to Lou Wetzel and Sam Brady. They go into this Indian town. And the other guys there accept them as Shawnees. But there was like one chief that was a little suspect. And he called him out, 
Sam drills him with his rifle. Lou Wetzel shoots another chief, and then they make their exit. Um, they, they said on their way out of the village, they saw two fine Kentucky bred horses. And they jumped on the backs. They ran the one horse into the ground. And one guy would ride, and the other one would run alongside the horse. When the guy running would get tired, he would jump on the horseback, the other guy would jump down, and he would run beside the horse. They made their way all the way to the higher river, rode that horse into the ground, got a horse from some friendly Delawares, and then plunged into the river. Now, I guess it was pretty cold at this time, because they said when they exited the river, they said their clothes began to get icicles on them. Now, they We've got done that. I've been there. We've done that, yeah. So, Sam tried making a fire, but I don't think they get a fire going too well. And I guess Lou Wetzel was like near death. I mean, he was butt froze up. So, what does Sam Brady do? Man, this is something right out of Empire Strikes Back. He pulls out his lightsaber, cuts up. I'm sorry, no. He pulls out his <laughs> he pulls out his knife, kills the horse, guts it, shoves Lou Wetzel inside the horse to warm him up. And I'm reading this, and I'm like, is that where they got that idea? You never know. Maybe the guy's writing. You know, was it was it Lucas that wrote Star Wars? George yeah, Lucas? George Lucas. Was did George Lucas read the exploits of you know Sam Brady? You never know. But. Um, then they, you know, of course, Lou Wetzel doesn't die. Rich can tell more about that. But um, they make their way back. So, at the end of the war, like I said, you know, he gets married and everything. The war ends, but, you know, for Sam Brady it, and his rangers, it doesn't end. Yes, there was an armistice. There was supposed to be a peace among all the tribes and everything like that. But there were still raids. And something occurs right around 1791. There was a man and his family that were murdered, or they were killed by Indians, and Sam and his rangers take chase. The trail splits. Um, Sam follows the trail further north, and some of the other guys go west. Ended up that the two daughters that were taken, they found them as they were going west, but Sam comes up with the guys that had all of the loot at a trading post. What does Sam Brady and his guys do? They shoot them all. Well, the guys at the trading post what they were running was a fencing operation. They would buy all the stuff that these Indians would raid and then sell it back to the inhabitants. Well, they were a little upset because they've just now destroyed their little golden ticket. Mm -hmm. And they talked to, um, I forget what sheriff it was, but they ended up putting out a warrant for Sam Brady's arrest. And he ends up, and this is about the time when General Anthony Wayne comes back on the scene because what's happening? There's the big confederacy that's growing out in the Ohio country. Mm -hmm. And um, Anthony Wayne wants Sam Brady as his captain of his, of his spies or rangers out there. But he can't take him out with this murder allegation hanging over his head. He, uh, so Sam Brady actually gives himself up um, and he goes on trial. But no one was going to convict <laughs> There's no way the jury was going to convict Sam Brady because mm -hmm. every one of those people knew someone or they were personally saved by Sam Brady. Mm -hmm. They said when when uh, the trial was, you know, when, when they asked the jury to render their verdict, no one got up from their seats. They just all said, not guilty. And that was it. Sam Brady goes out west. Uh, he is the captain of scouts. And um, he's at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, of course. That's where the end of Confederacy is put down. I think it was... Blue Jacket, Little Turtle, Correct. I think, were the two the two chiefs that were running. That <laughs> one was Shawnee, and I think the other one was Miami. Mm -hmm. So that's seventeen. I think that was done in seventeen ninety five. Yeah, five. Yes. Uh, summer five or summer summer ninety five or ninety four. Anyways, um, he comes back, and of course, I mean, there's still uh, Sam Brady is thirty nine years old at this point. Um, Twenty years of his life have been nothing but warfare. 20, the last 20 years of his life have been nothing but warfare. Um, French, you know, from, from, from fighting the, the, the Indians, um, you know, uh, out, out here in the Revolutionary War, you know, everything. Um, you know, Continental Soldier, then uh, Captain of the Scouts and Rangers. 
which was actually pretty common for a lot of guys back then. Oh yeah, well yeah, because everyone, every little fort had their captain, so or you know, arranging yeah, militias, you know, militia and stuff. And that's what they said. You know, the, the, those years in between, um, you know, that's what he was doing. He was either a captain of rangers or a militia, and he was living in. A, it would have been Ohio County, Virginia, at that time. Mm -hmm. On the way back from a scout, um, it was probably around October, maybe somewhere in there. Sam Brady is trying to navigate this, this stream. Some say maybe that old wound came into play that he took on his leap, his famous leap. But uh, his feet go out from underneath him. He plunges headfirst into a very swollen creek. By the time his men get to him, he was nearly drowned. And from that, they said that he developed pleurisy, which is basically an inflammation around the lining of the lungs. Mm -hmm. They said he'd get better, he'd get worse, he'd get better, get worse for about two months. And on December 25th, 1795, at the age of 39, and much, and just as Van Swearage and Fear, Sam Brady died, leaving Drusilla a very, very young widow. 39 years old, that was one heck of a life. Yeah, those 39 years. 20 those 20 years between 19 and 39. Yeah. Probably did more living than most most men did in several most, lifetimes. You know, several men, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I I really think that, you know, Sam Brady uh is, you know, like I said, I I think that he is the the hero of the Virginia and uh, Pennsylvania frontier. Well, here we are. We are at the grave site of Captain Sam Brady. Uh, the marker, actually, it's tough to read the original marker here, but uh, the one that was replaced, it says Captain Samuel Brady, Indian fighter, served in the 3rd and 8th Pennsylvania Regiment, fought in the battles of Boston, Princeton, Brandywine, and Monmouth. Revolutionary War, commanded scouts for General Mad Anthony Wayne, 1792. Husband of Drusilla Swearingen, 1756. 1795. Now you said Drusilla's not buried here? I don't think Drusilla is buried. I think, she, I mean, I thought she might have got remarried, okay. um, but I'm not sure on that. But she is not buried here. Well, she couldn't have been that old when he died, right? Well, no. So she was 15 when they got married, and I, what did I say, 83? 39, he died. Yeah, in, in 95. Yeah. He died, so she was only, she's in her late 20s. Yeah, oh, okay. so, yeah. Okay. You know? Um, and they had three children, I think, is what it was. I think they were all sons. Um, but yeah, he. So right around here was where uh, they had a frame house too. Uh, that's what they said that uh, was built. So it sat around here somewhere. They said it was right near the cemetery. So I have no idea, you know, exactly where at. But uh, the home site was right around here. So, well, we, once again. Yes. Thanks, Sam Brady. And someone who has already placed out flags. Yes, yeah, so uh, we so don't have to worry about it. for that. And yes. I like the, the Gadsden flag that they put out. That's awesome. So yeah, that's very cool. Not the Gadsden flag. But and there's a lot of other uh, yeah, veterans in here. Yeah, there's a lot well. of vets buried here. Yeah, quite. I mean, as we were walking around looking for the for his uh, stone, I mean, there has to be 10 or, 10 oh, or more. 15 more. Oh, yeah. yeah there's some from 18, I've seen 1812, Rev War, definitely. Okay. Um, I mean, I see. I think there's three. I think those aren't four. those three. Is that Civil War? There was Civil no, War down there. A, that says 1776. Oh, it does. Yeah, but there's does. some Civil War in the back. Yeah. Oh, was there? Yeah, okay. I saw two. So there's there's probably eight or ten Rev War vets buried yep. here, too. Yeah. But yeah, we'd like to thank uh, Captain Samuel Brady for his service and all the other veterans here that are buried in this uh, cemetery as well. So we thank all veterans that have served in any branch you know, of the military at any time uh, we thank them for their service and we owe them all a debt of gratitude and so that is what today is about uh, yep. we, we looked at three but we thank them all and so I just thank uh, Brian and Rich for coming along uh, for this and uh, for Rich driving as always um, we appreciate that and uh, we'll be back uh, we have other ideas for more trips that we're going to take so you're going to see the three of us on on more journeys for the the laid back history road trip but uh again thank you so much for joining in every week the the kind words that you, that you all put in the comments they mean a lot uh, they really do they let us know that you appreciate what we're doing 
Uh, and, and, you know, like uh, Rich said one time, we'd be doing this anyway because we just like doing it. We're out uh, in the rain. Yeah, yeah. So, so apparently we enjoy it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it really makes us feel good that you guys are enjoying it as well. And so, um, you guys have anything else? Yeah, I got one more thing. Yeah. Um, I read something the other day um, in tied in with Memorial Day, and it really kind of struck me to the core. Um, as you know, my dad just passed away a few months ago. He was a World War II vet. There are approximately only around 300,000 World War vets still alive. Most of them are in their 90s. Um, folks, I got to tell you, I got to strongly encourage you to take the time now while you still have the time talk to them listen to their stories it's it's the history of our country once they're gone that well of knowledge is gone forever you you god knows we all wish there was a phone that led up to heaven but there isn't you're not going to be able to ask them after they're gone get the stories now learn your family's history uh, the guy next door, the, the, the old guy with the crutches, talk to them, listen to them, and just most of all, remember them and thank them for what they did for our country. And you know, if it wasn't for people doing what you're asking them to do right now, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the stories about Lewis Wetzel, exactly. William Curry, yeah. or even Sam Brady, because it was men in the early 1800s that went around in, in the mid-18 or went around and talked to people that knew these guys. Mm -hmm. But they were old then, and they were remembering yeah. back as children <laughs> knowing these men. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the only way to, you know, record the past is to talk to those people, either record it or write it down. Yeah, it's our history. Don't let it be lost. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think on that note, we'll just go ahead and end. I think that was so a great good. place to end. So, again, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next week for another episode of laid back history. Thanks folks. Thanks. Let's go. Okay. All the camera difficulties taken care of. The now. whole time Hopefully. you're talking, I'm just gonna be like this. I know. <laughs> so when Sam Brady got the um <laughs> <laughs>